Welcome back to Lit vs. Genre, everybody, and here we are, Jeff, at episode four. I have to say, I was quite surprised multiple times yeah. <laughs> during yeah. this episode. I was like, yes. now, now for the first time, I'm completely Ooh. out of my depth. No, that's not true. There were some things that I knew about from the books that were like the right. Karen story right. and even the Matt mm -hmm. Rand story, though adjusted mm. you sort of get a sense of what right. things from right. the book they're going for um mm -hmm. but everything else what huh whoa whoa <laughs> yeah and, and i'm just gonna say early we're gonna do our best to keep it very much to like w this episode and where this uh, episode is in the book so we're not gonna go like beyond this moment um because people are asking you know like wait are we gonna get stories for later we're gonna avoid that but i mean there's so much to talk about just in terms of what happened yeah in let me just say too, but i don't yeah. want to be spoiled for future books anymore because i than anybody yeah. else because i'm now committed for better or worse to reading these other books mm -hmm. at some point i think i am gonna ask at times jeff mm. if anything does check out not without <sighs> like did it happen right. of, <laughs> yeah like, because i'm just yeah, I mean, super I... curious like what in this is just right. stuff i don't know but it does kind of happen or happen in some form later on and what does it yeah maybe i shouldn't even ask I, that i don't know i'm so confused well, i don't know what to well do. no no I, I i i think for for us and what we enjoy talking about and hopefully this you know works for our viewers is that we're totally going to spoil the episode so, yeah. like what what you saw in the episode Worse. anything that happened there anything that occurred in the episode is fair game whether it happened in the book one or book two, whatever, we're going to talk about it and its relationship to the book. But anything that's not in the show, we're not going to talk about like, oh, well, the next chapter in the book would be this. So right. is this the next thing they're going to do? So that's, that's the thing we're going to like attempt to do. <laughs> more we're, assuming, this episode. we're assuming yeah. that you watch the show and that's it. Yeah. We are also assuming... Exactly. That you have disliked sure. and subscribed down below at the bottom. <laughs> Which we so, appreciate. Yes, we sure appreciate. Hey, even though the dislike button for some people has vanished, myself included, apparently it does still click. It's still, it's like a YouTube test they're running to see the psychological effects oh, of no you know not getting to see numbers. Yeah, you at least oh. for someone like me, I'm part of the test group, and so you see the number of likes, but on any video, all you see is dislike, but it doesn't tell you how many other people have disliked something. So it's fascinating. So even more reason to dislike it. Yeah, yeah, yeah please jam things. on it. Jam on it. Um, but I mean, I, I came in hot with some big emotions, but if you've got something you wanted to mention besides, you know, just that it was big, please feel free. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, at first uh, I was really digging it. Like mm -hmm. I, it had the bigger mm -hmm. scope going outside of the world, mm -hmm. which I kind of mm -hmm. yearned for right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, some of the overhead shots of the castle looked a little bit like a video game, like an old uh, yeah. <laughs> Zelda-style video game yeah. or something where you're over top and you're just looking down. It looked like a little janky, right. but I just appreciated, like, ooh, this other conflict, these other characters, yes. this other world. Mm -hmm. I, I was totally digging it, and, and I was hyped for Logan. Yeah. That's what you asked for in the beginning, right. right? You're like, hey, let's 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 go bigger world. Let's see more of different places, like what's happening to Logan, because we had seen it in the trailers, uh, like what's happening with the Aes Sedai and the White Tower, like we've seen in the trailers. I should say we're also going to assume you've seen trailers, everybody. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. So I'm 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 with you. I okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in the emotion now. The big okay. emotions. I almost cried, Steve. I almost cried when Loghain healed the king's wounds because that not not because that moment is in the book at this this point or something right. like that but because it felt they were getting the spirit of Loghain right like wow. getting to see his inner conflict with and and the way they're doing the the madness uh was interesting in episode one of course they did like him just seeing a regular person right um which Spoilers, this episode, I really wanted to be able to look back and have it be like Tom or something, but no. But anyway, uh, so in, in episode one, they have him like see a real person. But in this one, it's more, uh, you know, the way what they've done for the magic of these like, you know, spirits almost talking to him, um, which I, I enjoyed the look of. And I just really enjoyed how the magic was all wrapped around the king. But then as it dissipated, it healed his wound. And then Logan was down beside him. I was like, oh, it just hit me. 
just so just right in the feels. It's it's exactly where I wanted to be hit, um, and it was a really really great moment. Um, and this is the type of thing that we've been saying from the beginning could work, and, and there's such an easy test for it. I mean, uh, the, you know, someone's done it before with Game of Thrones. Like this uh -huh. this is what people loved about Game of Thrones. Book readers and non-book readers, like of course, there can always be dissenting opinions. But at least what I heard and what I certainly enjoyed was getting to see scenes of characters that were doing things that actually happened in the narrative, but not that was ever on camera, if you will. Like ah, Game of Thrones ah. has tons of viewpoint characters, right. but in Martin's writing style, he devotes a whole chapter to each character. So, you know, he's not going to give you just one chapter of Loras or King Renly or something like right. that, right? But with a TV show, you can totally do that. And so actually getting even more character exposure than the books, which feels kind of crazy because the books gave a lot, is something the show could do very naturally. And that's a strength of this medium of storytelling. And so, yeah, doing things that are happening in the world that we don't get to see in the book because we're limited initially to Rand's POV. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's great. So I, you know, very excited to see this uh, as we do. Um, so that, that was the first one. I didn't actually cry. I almost cried. <laughs> later, I did cry. I, <laughs> but maybe I, not good tears later? No, like... yes. Yeah, so I was going to say, if you ask me about tears in an earlier episode, <laughs> especially episode one, it was tears of righteous fury. Uh, no, the the actress um, who was Ela, who was Aram's grandmother, her scene with Perrin. Oh, oh gotcha. Do you, I know I'm jumping, yeah. but just since we're talking no, about these moments, like, dude, it, it, even even thinking back to it, sorry, you were about to say something, and I'll, I'll launch into my little uh, spiel. Well, yeah, and, and I want to derail mm -hmm. you, because I, I wanted to talk about, when I was watching, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, Philosophy Fest, Jeff is going to be digging yes. it, he's digging you knew Philosophy it. Fest, you knew it. and like, you knew I was it. like, okay, this is going to be a, a plus for Jeff. Now, yes. the my thoughts and feelings to that part mm -hmm. were... This philosophy is working a lot better than in the books. Mm -hmm. And the reason I was say, why... It's even a little different. It's yeah. even a little different. They made some adjustments to it, and they did it yeah. because of the character backstory reasons. That at mm -hmm. each moment that we're getting the philosophy, it's doing a dual thing. You're not just getting, right. you know, here's my pacifism philosophy, and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I've heard of pacifism mm -hmm. philosophy before. It's like when she's like, ask Perrin, have you ever... Does she even? Did she actually say axe? I can't remember. She might have just said uh, like pick up arms or that, something. Yeah, that part so. was a little on the nose. Well, so this is story. Uh, this is TV show book difference. In the book, he's wearing an axe, so she right. can look at his. She, pardon me. She disdains all weapons, so uh -huh. she gives him side eyes about the axe he's carrying. Right. In in this one, she more just you know says it, and that that moment I felt like. I'll come back to that. But, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, we should talk about because for me, I'm like, okay, yeah. here's somewhere where that decision, mm -hmm. where Perrin mm -hmm. has fought back, and it right. has not worked out very right. well, right? Sort of right. now being a, a reflection of then this philosophy and this thing that she's challenging him on, and you also get that uh, that kind of. Uh, dramatic irony of you know audience knows some things that you know at least one character doesn't know and we understand how that's affecting right. the other character mm -hmm. it's just an mm -hmm. added level it's a dramatic level rather than just a yep. philosophical level and then they did the same mm -hmm. thing with egg later when he kind of talks about how some people don't come back to the tinkers yeah. and like he's like sometimes you're just not supposed to come back right which again is like another mm -hmm. kind of like in the books yeah. talking about book number one i feel like min does mm -hmm. a, a similar move <laughs> to kind of, break yeah, up sort the, of, sort of to break up the couple well I, this is just some of you watch yeah. our book podcast that i joked about quite a bit and yeah. like i feel like he's making the same kind of move like on like one level you can be yeah. like oh that's a sly move to like pry her away <laughs> from you know whatever oh, commitments he's good. she had before he's good. but again just that that whole philosophy means something on a character level and it's not so intellectualized just like a, a statement of philosophy steve they gave me tinkers and i'm in love <laughs> like i mean this this is what i i you know begged for and and they did uh, with some at a moment it sounds like worked for you but they, they took the tinkers and kind of amped them up to the next level uh, by making it more character focused as opposed to just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it made it work for yeah. me. It made it feel a lot more relevant 
um, more yeah. than just an aside that we're vamping, you know, until the next mm -hmm. big story beat. Right, right. I mean, the whole... So, yeah, there's just a lot to talk about there, but um, what I was going to bring up was that they are doing... The the wheel turning and reincarnation is, of course, a, a narrative in the books, um, but I feel like they're hitting it a lot harder early, um, and it's working for me. Um, I had mentioned before that, you know, despite my complaints about episode one, I really liked... Tam's speech, um, you know, about, you know, the wheel turning and everything. Um, and to hit that again with the, the grandmother and have her reason be, I was going to be like, oh, she's, you know, going to say I'm doing it for the world or something like that. But to do it for the next time her daughter spins out on the wheel was just like mm. a, a straight up cry. Because that, that felt so real to me that, that, yes, if you have this philosophy and I don't just mean the philosophy of the way of leap, but if you have the philosophy of, you know, reincarnation and coming right. back, of course, that, that's a logical connection you would be in her, in her line about, you know, what greater revenge against violence than peace. I was just mm. like, oh, oh, it was just, I mean, she she killed it to me. Not only did the actress do an incredible job, but I felt like there was some really good writing uh, to go with that. And that just was so powerful to me. Um, and then to a similar point, uh, yours uh, about Aram's talk, e even multiple points in that, like I thoroughly enjoy, uh, we, we had said this before, mm -hmm. the actor who's playing Aram, I feel he's killing it. He's, yeah. he's just got charm to spare mm. um, and he's just doing a wonderful job with the role. I really, really appreciated the scene with him and Egwene uh, where he's talking about the song now, you know, no one believes in it and stuff, the kids and the elderly. And then she's like, didn't you maybe already find it? And, and that mm. felt very, again, true to Egwene. She doesn't say that exact thing in the moment in the books, but it worked for who her character is. And I think that's all, you know, I'm asking for and some other brands are asking for, like doing things that feel at least like something a character could say. Don't get me wrong. There's also plenty of other complaints as we talk about in other videos of just stuff not happening like in the books, right? So mm -hmm. I know there are people out there that aren't even going to be happy with that because it's not exactly uh, what you said, but for me, that spoke to who Egwene is and an insightful badass, right? Uh, you know, that, uh, you know, Egwene's such an awesome character that that felt right for her to, like, help someone see something in a different perspective. And then, as you're saying later, their scene where he talks about that um, very, very much struck me because I know that uh, certain cultures uh, that we have in, in our world, in our society, are very insular, but then they do have children at a particular time go out see the world and see what that means to them. Mm -hmm. So that just felt very real for the Tuatha one to do that and parallel, as you're saying, exactly what Egwene is going through. So yeah, you see me going off because that that whole arc was just super emotion filled to me and amazing. Okay, so let's talk, <laughs> before <sighs> we get into <sighs> everything going on <sighs> in Aes Sedai camp, let's talk well, about yeah, Matt Rand first. Real quick. Oh, okay. I got two last tinker things. About super two fast. more tinker things. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, just because the axe thing I reacted to, that mm. to me was an example of perhaps not quite as subtle writing as I was white. It felt like a little on the nose. Like, I just wanted a little more of... I, I know she's walking, but I wanted either the actress or the director to give her an opportunity to sort of, like, notice Karen's mm. just slight reaction mm. when she said axe. Mm. And then, you know, you know that mom look, that mother look. And she's <laughs> described that way in the books of, like, that knowing, okay, now we're going to talk about this right. thing. And, and, you know, and, and then say it. So I just, it, it, it felt, that one felt a little, just well, again, too. It sounds too like you didn't have a problem with the choice. You just wanted an extra beat um on yep, it yeah it. Sure. I, just, I just want a little beat there and it's I, i'm nitpicking but hey welcome to me <laughs> uh so you know uh, and then later and this is uh something happened twice and something i mentioned before i just wish the editing was just a little more careful and i know it's mm, hard like there's mm. so much like I, i've edited videos before and been like ah so like editing a movie oh my goodness you know right yeah you know, well, this yeah, is my first crazy, time right? editing anything for these videos and it is a, right. a nightmare hellscape so yeah <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so like props to editors in general okay but there's two moments that just like jarred me because in the dance scene where Gwen is dancing dancing with aram um the grandma's there i was there but then, just moments later, she's off with Perrin in this quiet space, and, like, that 
could like that just time wise mm. does not work out and so that kind of moment is just sort of jarring and for me it's just because i like the grandma so i know she did so i was like oh she's having fun because you see like the grandfather playing the drums and then she's spinning dancing uh. and then it cuts to Perry like hitting the wheel and she's standing there as if she hasn't been dancing at all i was like uh. wait what I rewound it like three times, and I was like, no, no, that's her. <laughs> like, I'm not crazy. So, you know, it's it's a little thing, but, like, they didn't need the grandma spinning. They could have just cut that one, because they already had a lot of individual shots. Yeah, to answer this question. Answer this question. Yeah. Is that Do as it. bad as there being a Coke bottle in the uh, Game of Thrones scene sitting is, on the table? Is, is that as bad? Is there... Oh, oh I mean, yeah. I like, noticed that. I did not notice that. Of one. course, this I was also in the one. last season when everybody was questioning. Oh, uh, yeah. Everyone checked that during the last, was the last season, season anyway. Maybe it was the second to the last, but I just remember very famously. I think that's the crew rebelling. I think that's the crew <laughs> being like, and here's what we think of this last season. I just want to go on record to show this is the level of caring that's taking place. Uh, but the reason I mention it is, if it, it was just that one, oh, yeah, okay, I'd still mention it because that's who I am. But <laughs> two, there's a similar shot uh, in to transition to the I said I camp, but though I know we're going to go to uh, the mat. There's a similar shot in the I said I camp where they're coming in, and there's a shot of like the three reds, like shot from below, standing up. And then we cut, and <laughs> the main red Leandrin is, you know, sitting um, in the chair, you know, fielding uh, Logan. And I'm like, we just saw her two seconds. Wait, right. what? Like so, that, well, Land, that makes Land, no and, sense. Land and Nynaeve also had to make their way down because they were also they, looking from above, right? Weren't they? That's that's when they're actually in the camp. So uh, they're like walking. So they uh, are above, and then they're. I mean, you might write. They might be above, but even still, like it was just a weird shot to go from here's three reds standing together, and then all of a sudden she's off doing something else. So I just, you know, that's all I'm saying is a little a little more care from the editing team would be nice. Though I realize it's a really tough job it's just sort of those moments that take you out of it as a viewer but these are honestly very small you know observations in comparison to things we were talking about in the previous but let's oh. uh, talk about the farm because man is there some stuff to talk about oh on the farm oh too. is there a lot i thought we would kind of blow past well, this part and get to i said i camp which is I, mainly I, what i, I want to I talk say about yes I would say yes and no. I would say there's there's some real quick stuff to talk about, but there's also a couple moments to me. Okay, okay so go my, ahead. my only thoughts were I was kind of okay with everything um, in that part, but believe it or Wait, not... I gotta talk about Tinkers. Wait, sorry, sorry. We gotta back up. One last thing. I promise this is it. I promise this is it. It's just because I know this is gonna be... I know this is gonna be talked about. Okay. So, as you brought up, which I thought was very important, I think we see why the, you know, team wanted to... Axe, Baron's wife, pun intended, uh, to then give this moment, as you say, where we know something the characters don't, and to make the philosophies that the Twelfth One, the Tinkers, are then espousing to land more immediately. Um, however, I don't, I don't know if that's. I, I'm interested to hear from people. I just want to put this moment out there while we're in that subject, so we can completely finish it. Did this work for you all, you viewers, right? Because I know that there was some people who were totally fine. Uh, with what happened to Baron's wife, other people not. I, I would agree that this moment does hit more. I am curious if we're more on the uh, Brandon Sanderson's suggestion that killing the wife is such a big thing. Um, should it have maybe been something smaller, like maybe killing his master, that type of idea. I'm just curious how people felt. Did this scene and moment sort of justify the wife's death to people? Um, especially if you already liked it, or, you know, what if you didn't like it? Would you rather have been something else? Because, again, I think, as you're saying, and I agree with the idea is right to have him already have a bad negative experience with it, and then that, you know, thus hit more in this moment. So I just wanted to put that out there since that was such a big talking point previously. Sorry for that interruption. I am truly done now with the tickets. Has Brendan watched I it, finally? I remember in our last video, Ooh. you were all like, oh, he wanted to, he can't. Yeah. When I rewatched yeah. our video, I was like, wait, the dude didn't watch this thing, which is a, a television adaption of something he himself wrote a significant chunk of. He wanders well, on Reddit that. and is like, hey, everybody, <laughs> how was it? I was like, I do not believe this. I don't believe any person would actually do this. Well, I think I think what happened was that he posted it like right before 
it came out. Okay. So it, it's not it, it's not like he was posting it days after it, it had right. released and been like, I haven't watched it yet. He he posted it like right right as it was releasing. Um, I, I admit to being surprised that as a consultant, he wouldn't have gotten an advanced copy right, of like it. Like screeners um, of or, it. Or, or, or maybe you know, or, or at, maybe it was purposely. Wasn't there a London premiere? Did he, he not go to the London premiere that, that, that all the YouTubers there was. went to? Yeah, I know, right? I only know about the London premiere you because all these it, YouTubers. Dude. You wrote I, it. I know. You would think he would have been invited to London premiere, but he, I know, recently was in Hawaii, so that might have conflicted. Yeah. And he's also traveling around for a lot of other things because of his writing, right? So I don't know. But I mean, granted, if you're going to have somebody at the London premiere, you would think it would be Brandon. But I will say, having watched since you finished the book series, right? <laughs> uh, but having having watched some of those YouTubers, I didn't see. I am sure if anyone like Daniel Green or something had gotten to do right, like if he was there, and here's Brandon Sanders, he would, then, he would have mentioned it, right? Like I, I didn't watch. I mean, people had some really long, uh, like London red carpet things. I didn't get to watch all of those, but no, I didn't see Brandon on any of those. So legit, no, I, I don't think for whatever reason he was at the London premiere. Uh, if he did get an advanced copy, he chose not to watch it, I guess. Um, or, or it's like you're saying that he just was like sounds doing it to like weird. cover bases or something. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't know. I don't know. Sounds odd, but okay. Uh, I, I do believe that he gave that recommendation and they chose not to listen. Yeah, no, I, 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 I think I, that's likely legit. So anyway, yeah, I'm just, I'm just curious because it's been such a big talking point. Um, you know, and, and people that are interested can read. And, and, and thing. it's, it's not out... like he's just saying. If he's put out a video that's talked more about his involvement, I would certainly be interested um, to yeah, see that, Yeah, I don't think he too. has yet. That's, and that's he, really he is doing more. Is that something he's choosing yeah. not to talk? Because dude talks about everything. Dude talks he, constantly. He does now. Yeah. He, he's really dived into the YouTube space uh, recently. Um, so, yeah, and just uh, people, I'm sure, probably know we're talking, we're talking about Brandon Sanderson. He's the author that finished the last three books. We talked about him recently because he came out with a statement on Reddit about not not just bad things, but he was saying, like, here were some suggestions I made for the show. I'll be interested to see if they made him or not. And one of them was about, um, you know, parents' wives. So anyway, since we're starting to get some payoff in this episode uh, for that choice, I was just really curious to hear people's reactions to it. Okay. Two off the one, finish. Nice. <laughs> Jeff, guess guess what I what my reaction is to the Matt rand Ooh. tom part what if you were to guess like what is my my biggest reaction mm. to that? what would you say i don't know i part, part of me is like you're glad that it was oh oh i know what it is what am i talking about you hate because it's it's doing mystery <laughs> right? I, I, was, I was about <laughs> well, to, that's about to go on this alternate one I, I do think the whole so, i do think the whole episode is now trying to gin up the mystery uh, yes. a lot more and and even like the weird I, after we had talked about it in the first video the four of you the five of you mm -hmm. discrepancy I, I thought more about that i was I, like was that just a mistake like did they just mess it up i went and, back and watched it well i mean i yeah i went back and yeah. watched it too moraine definitely says the four of you uh, i'll have to like i'll have to dig out the thing right. but at the end or she says one of you here I think she says. Oh, right. Well, that, I think that's the added mystery. And so let me just say something real quick for spoilers. This, this is one spoiler. I think we just, everyone talks about it. It's one yeah. of the biggest changes for the series is that in this show, there's a more of a mystery. Who? I mean, there, there is in the books. There is in the books. But not not to the extent that it is here. I, I, um, I so that can, that's one thing. I think yeah. we can talk about it without revealing uh, who it is. Right. You know. Um, sure. Although I will sure. say, uh, I saw somebody in comments. Don't read our comments, by the way, if you don't want spoilers, because then you're, most people have been pretty good at Most yeah. people have. It's true. Yeah. Um, but somebody said, uh, "My wife called." I think he said, "My wife called." Exactly who it was in like the first five minutes of the show and my wife did the exact same thing i like like that comment because i'm like yeah she also called exactly who it was in the first five seconds That's of the right. show so like yeah but then they there is some comment again about five i forget where the dark friend the dark friend says she five. says and, and but that, then in this episode somebody reiterates right right and then, and then matt talks about that right because right. he's like why did the dark friend say five so you're right there there is a difference between what Moraine says, and then what the Dark Friend says, and then that's why in this episode it's like, who's the fifth, right? right? And that's like what Matt's asking, and then we get that in the Moraine scene. Right, right, right. 
And so, and actually, I mean, with that, I, I do think it's kind of interesting that they're tying that mystery so much to the little abilities that everybody is getting along the way, which I think Rock, Jordan also yeah. didn't really do so much. Like, I never... No. no. Yeah, like, I never, like, like everybody is getting abilities as we go along in that first book, but you don't yeah. think, like, at any point, there's no misdirect with those abilities, right. as I think and is going on here. I would say, I did read a comment from someone before, um, before it released about, and I don't remember if they were talking about the first three episodes or first six, but they were saying that there were some changes that, like, Jordan could have thought of, and I will say, this is one of them mm -hmm. that that with matt being sick and uh, acting weird mm -hmm. that like crazy yeah that, that would that would be suspect right. <laughs> right like even even in our previous video i was saying how i really like the actor who's playing matt and i was like i think he can play off I, I think he can do some of you know what he's already doing sort of the um and, and i almost said like craziness or insanity but then i was like wait that's the same thing as you know, what is talked about for, you know, uh, what happens with Ben Kajanel. But then I, like, didn't want to use that exact word. I was like, oh, that's too similar. And then in this episode, that's literally what they're doing. They're talking about how it's oddity. And I was like, oh, that does make sense. Hmm. So a little, a little bit of hats off to uh, to them for making that association. It does sort of feel like if you're going to have the mystery, why not, right? Um, to, to more specifically tie those character actions to the world building together. Right. No, he, here's my time to shock you, Jeff. My main reaction to that was, I wanted more Tom. We did not uh, get enough Tom <laughs> in the show. Which, that, again, that if, you, my if, if, if you've seen our, our yeah. uh, videos for the book, yeah. I hate Tom in the book. Absolutely worst character to me uh, in, the, in the book. And I liked to hear how yeah. they were they were giving him basically the same motivation, but I was like, oh, here's how you do it. You front load it. You give it to us, give it to us right away. Right? This is sure this is the second episode with Tom, but I mean there wouldn't have been like much of an opportunity for yeah. him to tell that story right, right. in the in episode mm -hmm. three. So he tells it now. Now we have it. We understand his motivations. We yeah. understand this dude. And then I was like, but then just like I guess spoiler for the book, just like in the book, then we get separated from Tom again yeah. right away. And I was Too like, no, slow. just let him go with him no. for a while. I, I don't just, know if they're... Just a little bit longer. Right. I, and I don't know, maybe yeah. they're compressing something else. You know, it seems clear to me in future books, if and when I read them, there's going to be Tom again. But I, I don't know, like, how much compression is happening, whether that's going to happen relatively quickly here in the show right. or something else but i was yeah. i was like no not not and right away guess after from that. steve everybody as total guess <laughs> i've only yeah, read book one right. lots of people have yelled at me yeah. for only having read book one but yeah. it keeps me relatively spoiler free <laughs> yeah which is nice which is nice um yeah so you and i are on the same page about that um i think that that is more the i think there's a lot of good in that arc but I think this is the arc that people are going to be finger wagging about or, or disliking um, because what I, I'll start with what I like. What I like about it is, yeah, the, the compression. Like we do get the feel of Matt and Ran on the road needing to muck out stables to, you know, get a place to sleep. Like, and that was always just a fun sort of journey aspect to the story. Um, and so we, we got some of that and I got, you know, I, I liked Rand being the one to actually like talk and, and, and know about archery because we had seen mm -hmm. him with a bow and arrow in the very first one. Mm -hmm. So I love the little details of him being like, if you want to shoot us, you wouldn't be holding with a fist, you'd be holding with the fingers. Like those little moments to me, again, they like, they speak to the right spirit. It doesn't have to be the exact words that happen in the book as long as you're capturing the overall feel without, in my opinion, doing, and, and you know, other people's visions, right? Without doing disservice to the characters. But anyway, so... I really like that moment. I like that we got them into, you know, the person's farm. I will say that when uh, Matt was like throwing up, right, like the darkness, um, and then the little girl comes up, that moment hit for me harder because I knew how he felt about his sisters, right? right? Like, so mm -hmm. very similar to what we were just talking about with the parent moment. So like, 
I get why they're doing what they were doing. Mm -hmm. It's just, man, that first episode just had so many changes. It's like if you would just only <laughs> change maybe like three things as opposed to 30, um, like I think a couple of those changes would be hard. But I mean, don't get me wrong. I have, man, I have watched so many YouTube videos, read so many comments just to try to stay as, as up to date mm -hmm. on this as I can. And so many people hate uh, what they did to the parents, um, mm -hmm. you know, to Matt's parents, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I will say, then you feel it in this moment. Like mm -hmm. when the little girl's like, oh, they're with your parents? And you can just, I mean, Matt, that, that actor, oh, so sad, <laughs> losing him. But you see it on his face, that, that pain. And you see him trying not to show the pain to the little girl. And it was just... That, that hit me, too. Like, Jeff, I, I thought that scene was really great. Are yeah, these changes no. winning you over? <laughs> <laughs> the actors are selling them, Steve. And well, no, I feel like in, in these moments, I feel like there's, especially with the Ela scene, like that writing was just, mm. oh, it just took the philosophy and doubled down on it. And it did more with like the reincarnation aspect, but in a way that works for the world so well. And this, to me, was a smaller representation of that. I don't feel like it had as much going for it. But I will say I felt the change. And when I felt it, it was almost like a betrayal. It was like, oh, I feel mad because of his daughters. How dare you feel mad about it? I mean, not his daughters, his sisters. And like, and like the parents like, how dare you feel mad about the parents? Because they're not like that. So yeah, I was very... I, was very I feel the here. conflict in you. <laughs> uh, you know, seriously, seriously, man. It was, but but no, I can I can definitely appreciate there are some really nice emotional hits there because of what was set up before. Um, so yeah, no, it's it's. I hate to use the phrase winning it over, but there it is trending in that direction with those moments. Also, like the little doll she gives them, and she's mm -hmm. like, Brigitte has always wanted to see the world. Mm -hmm. Like that, I don't know. Like that that to me always gets me with like a kid giving away something that clearly doesn't have much but they're doing it like because they want to help somebody else. They see someone else in need, like just the, the good of humanity, right? Like mm -hmm. seeing that type of moment um, from, you know, an innocent child, like, oh, so sweet. Um, and I will say that I was about to like flip my TV when they were all dead and Matt's in there. I was like, if you had Matt oh, right, kill right, this right. family, I will smash my television <laughs> right now. So like they they definitely got me with the anger in that like the right, thought right, like right. and I didn't put it past them because of some other changes <laughs> that they made. I was like they would do it. They would do this crazy thing right now. So well, that's kind of that's interesting. That kind of made that work better because like if you don't yeah. think they they could really do that, then it would yeah. be a pointless misdirect. So yeah, that was what I was just gonna say. <laughs> so they terrible choices they made. <laughs> so, they got you. <laughs> terrible choices they made really fooled me into thinking they might again. Uh, but, you know, I mean, obviously subjective, but I see terrible. But um, but I will say, so that that all to me did work. Uh, and I really enjoyed the Tom scene. That felt very real to me about him talking with Rand about, like, you got to watch him. Like, we got to we got to mm -hmm. watch him, you know, because my my nephew didn't. Right. And that that scene to me worked beautifully because right. it made so much sense. Kim telling just rant right. about what he had noticed mm -hmm. and that gave it this added sense of legitimacy of like right. why is this scene happening because right. this is exactly what a person who has been through this would do right it felt like you know an alcoholics anonymous talking to like the best friend about like okay we got to do what we can i've seen this played out before and that to me again different than the book better really, worked for me. really? better how, right how dare you see better it? In the book, yes. it's clearly I, just I, there because about I, what's to happen, what's going to happen next. I, I, I will agree. The emotion of the scene hits so much more. The the worry, the concern hits mm -hmm. much more when you're talking to one of two friends mm -hmm. about something like that. Uh, and, and also, it wasn't as pointed. That he was more just explaining why he wanted to help people like young men right. who might be caught up in Aes Sedai affairs. It wasn't as like I'm worried about him. We got to watch exactly. him together, right? right? And that's just more specific to the character. Yeah. So, yes, I, I will agree that 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 scene really hit well. It really hit well. So, now on the stuff I hate. No, uh, <laughs> but, no go ahead. Have you got, have you got something else? Uh, no, on that's there? all I have for that. So, I'm yeah, I'm fascinated to hear your thoughts about Aes Sedai Camp plot. Well, wait, wait, wait. I, I'm talking about... I'm talking about this scene. Oh, there's so still this stuff you made to about me, it. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, this, this, that hate, but it felt a little, like, sort of cheap and wide. But um, the first one was, you said, uh, 
losing Tom so quickly after getting him felt unfortunate to me. Um, it was just really something that was fun about that scene. I do wonder, again, how much they're compressing, like how quickly we're potentially getting out of book one and into book two, right. maybe. I don't know. Um, I mean, they are flying through this stuff. So um, could be. So it could be justified. But I was really enjoying the, the interaction. So for this one, strangely, I'm going to kind of, can't believe I'm saying this, kind of give them the benefit of the doubt. Like if, if you got something else awesome you want to show me, with Matt and Rance, cool. Um, but I, I do, I'm sad that we didn't get more of this actor as Tom because I was really enjoying him and the interactions with the group. Uh, in terms of the thing I didn't like, the Fade killing the family just felt, don't get me wrong, I, I know why they did it. They did it for the misdirect, uh, but it felt sort of like a cheap misdirect, in my opinion, mm. after the fact, because if the Fade is tracking them, like, he would just track and find them in the hayloft. Like, why would he take the time to kill a bunch of people in a small house where his his quarry is not? Like, he's risking waking them up with, like, the screams of them he's killing. Like, I feel like they just really, really wanted a scene with dead bodies and Matt, after the talk, for us to be like, oh, my goodness. And then I felt like it wasn't fully earned. Mm. Now, in on the flip side... I feel it can be argued. I feel it can be argued that if that emotion hit for people in the way it did for me, it's worth it, especially because we are sort of dealing with a nameless evil. So evil just does what evil does. Right, <laughs> right? Right. Fade loves killing things. Right. Sure. Uh, the problem is that the fade continues to be the sort of this faceless, <laughs> I'm funny today, this faceless evil that we keep uh, going up against. So we're not really getting a lot of motivation from it. Um, so, you know, it's, that, that to me just doesn't, it doesn't hit as well personally as it could if it was just a little bit more justified. It feels like, you know, killing and death. And I've, I've seen some people say this, that um, that the show is just feeling sort of dark and edgy for dark and edgy's sake, because the Wheel of Time isn't that. And, and I was thinking about this more recently, that the Wheel of Time is not grim dark. It's not, you know, Game of Thrones. It's, yeah, dark stuff happens, mm. but... There's a, there's a lot of light. There's a lot of good humanity. There's a lot of adventure. Um, and just, just as sort of like a case in point, it's a book that doesn't have swearing or sex, really. So, you know, if you're wanting to read something that's clean, if you well, I mean, I'm just talking about like a section of people that want to, want to read a particular type of story, like you can. Like, like it's, it's, a, it's a series that you don't need to worry about like, oh, there's going to be swearing left and right and, and you know, gruesome details. Like there, there is, I would say the darkest that it gets is there is murder, there's some torture and stuff like that. Um, but not so much in the very beginning like this with like, you know, dead kids and like the whole time. Like, I mean, even in Edmonds Field, like the two rivers, you know, they were decimated by the Trollocs in the show. That's not what happens in the book so i actually um, I thought do... that was gonna be more when i saw some mm. of the stills mm. I, it made it look like right. it was wiped out that end scene and again the end scene's so fast it just moves so it's quick so but i mean you've seen all the bodies people. yeah i i don't yeah. even remember that the, the same bodies. shot that i remember in the stills mm. of just all the bodies lined mm. up is that shot in there i guess it is yeah yeah no it, it, like, it was like a more because overhead that's, shot in that's, the still or that's something. who perrin like brings the uh the perrin brings the uh, Layla, whatever. his wife's body yeah. there and lays it uh -huh. in a row right so um but i mean it, it didn't like feel thing. overwhelming no. it didn't feel that much beyond the book to me and, and again because it was pretty short like i didn't feel like the well, town's yeah. completely off the map sure the inn's destroyed right. <laughs> because marine did that right. thing but i didn't feel like it felt similar to okay yeah this is rebuildable these people well, haven't been genocided you know, off the face of the earth you know like it did it didn't feel right. that bad. i'm just saying that in the books you don't even get that scene right so that means you're not getting this huge violent war scene is is what I'm oh, getting at. Oh, so yeah. I, I I'm just getting at that this show, especially with a scene like this, with like the dead family and dead kids, for most people that's it's nothing, right? Like I mean, yeah, yeah, we've we've seen it in Game of Thrones or countless other Witcher, or Grimdark shows. Like that that's the norm now. Is this? But for and this isn't necessarily a, a me complaint, but for people out there that wanted the clean that that liked Wheel of Time because it didn't have left and right murder it didn't have swearing it didn't have sex it is sort of 
I don't know. I feel like we are losing something with how dark the show is going. Um, and yeah, I can get that it's a big emotional moment. I, I felt it. I wanted to flip the TV uh, when I thought maybe Matt mm-hmm. did it. But like that that's a... Uh, while I feel they are getting the spirit of certain moments right in, in other ways, from a, a larger overall look at it, they're really changing the feel of Wheel of Time. Um, and I think you're going to continue to see some fan backlash because of that. It's that's just something I've been thinking about more recently. Sure. That, I mean, that's super interesting yeah. to, to hear that because I, obviously I haven't read all the books. Mm. Um, I was kind of anticipating the books getting a little bit darker especially when you told me like we get more of the bad guys perspectives and you know things like that Did you with that and i just kind of thought mm-hmm. it wasn't so much like i read that book and thought like oh this is wholesome and this is what he's going for other than there wasn't really that many opportunities in that first book for it to like not be wholesome you know what i mean it kind of felt more well, like that it's where ch- i think it's where he chooses to focus right like i mean you know, we we can say, you know, as writers, especially, you know, where, where it is a moment come from. It's something you want to write or it feels right for the character or it's going to drive the plot, right? I mean, if Jordan had wanted, even with limited POV early in the book of Rand, like, he didn't have to have Rand and Tam go back to the house. They could have been in Edmund's field and been there for the attack, right? But I think that Jordan, I, I don't know for sure, but all we can say is that Jordan chose not to write a huge battle scene. And but it, it's a huge and jump to say that he not, did that to keep it wholesome. Well, I'm, I'm not saying he did. Well, for sure, right? But then, and and then to come back and people aren't dead, right? People are hurt, but people aren't dead. Wait, and people weren't dead, dead in the book? Nobody no, was dead. No. No, I don't believe anyone was dead. Whoa. Yeah. I need to fact check they, on they that talk, in the they, comments. They talk, you know, they talk about literally getting, nobody died in that whole I believe, thing. I believe no one dies. I believe it's like, it was crazy. Marina Land scared them away. Uh, some buildings got burned, but everyone's okay. Um, some people have been hurt for sure, and that's who Nene and Brain are tending to. It just, so people might be about to die. Right. right? Like it, it really. But he doesn't walk up and like there's a line of it bodies. It really strains my right? credulity yeah. because I the what we get right. is Nynaeve and Egwene running around everywhere doing there are nursing. Are treating people. To I'm They're getting the sense people. of like a whole bunch of people. Right. But no one is named as dead. Like no, no one is like right. these three people died. Like that doesn't that doesn't happen in my in my recollection. And I'm just point, I'm not talking about the realism of that because sure we can we if, if there's if there's a an invasion like right. we saw on the show in, in the book to have no one die feels a little unrealistic. And then we're but told again, in story time a story where everyone dies. Yes. Sure, in, in story time. But I, I do wonder again how much of those choices were from a more some field from someone who had been uh he served was in battle you know like i think he did he does show more of the horrors of of war and stuff but i feel like it's again and this is another thing people have talked about there's that sort of loss of innocence for the main characters Mm -hmm. that leaving a small town where they don't know about stuff and then going into the world and experiencing things um and not having fully experienced it already like obviously the chalk attack disrupts their world but it's not until sort of later that they get to see more of those things. And, and and don't get me wrong, like the problems with war and getting to see the evil and the way they treat people and torture, like I said, does happen, but not right from the get-go. And again, there there continues to be no sex, no swearing. So I'm just saying that it's a it's a writing style to write that sort of like cleaner narrative that most people could pick up and read, even if they end up being more adult themes. I'm just saying the show is very much straying from that. Well. All right. I I mean, I, I'm going to keep pushing back on this because I, A, yeah. I don't know I completely accept the original premise of it. I ha- Again, I've only read one book, so I'm not very qualified sure. to discuss on that. But B, this show feels, it does not feel grimdark to me in like even the slightest degree. Crazy. You know what show does feel Perfect. grimdark to me? the show you love arcane i tried to watch that i thought it was miserable it's like so like depressing and like i was like why am i even watching this depressing thing that's just bumming me out every second that it's on the screen that's grimdark to me this thing feels uh, this, it does feel light and like it it does it does i'm not saying it's all grimdark i, I just mean yeah. moments like this are very much uh departure is all. Right. That's all. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I could 
I can buy that yeah. to a limited degree, but I'm skeptical. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't mean like the whole episode, like mm. the Duavo and everything sure. is fine, you know. Um, I just mean that, that they're choosing to focus on things that Jordan didn't focus on from like a thematic standpoint, mm. is all. But, but anyway, so uh, those would be it. And the, my only other complaint is, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll say the rest. As we said, it was, you know, Tom there and gone, a shame. Uh, and then the phage is sort of murdering everybody so we could have that moment. I, I think a lot of people are going to like it. it. It felt like a, a red wedding moment. Like, I, I think, you know, they built it up. I think a lot of people are going to watch it. They're going to freak out. You're going to have lots of reaction videos of people being like, ah, you know, as, as I was. Um, it just didn't feel quite as... Well, I, I don't think it's a red too. wedding moment. Yeah. What made that so amazing is yeah. that people were... Nobody's invested in that family. Like, nobody... I mean, yeah, it's right. sad. It, a little girl died. It, it, exactly. I, I'm like, just saying, I think they're going for shock value. <laughs> right. I just meant shock value. Yeah, I mean, right. red wedding is like its own thing. Um, and yeah, not th this is not that. But I'm just saying, red wedding to me felt earned. Where this, to in the same degree, didn't. Because we knew the reasons why they were doing it. But anyway, uh, to the... Brain and ice that I see. Yeah, I, I just I'm just gonna mm. let you speak on this because I mm. don't really know where to start with it. Um, this is like complete. Yeah, I mean, God, what what feelings do I have? I I don't know what feelings I should have about this. I mean, I kind of liked seeing the other Aes Sedai, mm -hmm. meeting those other Aes Sedai. Um, I, I dug, I remember like when you were kind of talking about that line that he's the most powerful, whatever Chandler that I've ever seen you being like, yeah. um, kind of poo pooing on that. I was like, I was fine with that. Again, I like that there's the stakes of that. You need two of them to hold yeah. them down the whole time. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of liked most of the like warder interplay and mm -hmm. Nynaeve yeah. getting kind of, you, you kind of see different Aes Sedai jockeying to kind of bring her over to their side is how I interpreted it is they can yeah. kind of foresee that she's you know on this path right. and they're trying to like get their foot in the door um mm -hmm. so I thought all of that was was fine I did not expect Loghain to be wrapped up at the end of this episode I did not expect like this to be like a one and yeah. done plot line uh, right. And it kind of broke that little promise of the opening scene of going, okay, here's this larger world, and you're going to see these threads right. play out. It was like, actually, no, that was just the prelude to this one episode, and now it's done. And I'm like, ah. Yeah, th this to me, well, I I'm really actually, I'm really fascinated by these directions, so please continue if there was anything else you have. Uh, like yeah, other than that, like, like, Here's a misdirect that doesn't work. When Lan gets his throat cut, I'm like, you see what's going to happen. Like, you know Nynaeve's going to heal him, like, have, like, this, uh, you know, emotional power moment, which also feels cliche to me, though I can't really think of, like, a pure example. Well, maybe, like, Superman at the end of Superman. Suddenly he could do this amazing thing that Superman's never been able to do because he's so Part emotional, you know? And uh, all of that... Not even am I so mad that, like, we just super powered up Nynaeve right away. It was just, like, I saw it coming. Like, it was like, oh, this is what's happening. And moments of surprise that were in other parts of the episode yeah. were not here at this finale for me. I, I didn't feel the writing was as strong in this arc. This, to me, was the, the weakest of the three arcs uh, that we were on. Um, which is kind of funny, because I, I, they did the most time there, right? Right. Um so. I'll, I'll kick off with some that really work for me. The warder scene. Oh, oh, did I? I loved everything about that. I, I we had we had talked about him before about this guy that the guy that I thought previously was going to be Tom. I don't know. I, he just has a gravitas. He does to him, look as, like as him. Let's before. be fair. He does. <laughs> he I, I'm can like, be his brother. Like, Let's, come, you know. come on, give, give me, give me some here. Um, yeah, like with him and Land training and Land like smacking him in the gut. Not that would Land ever do that. No, I mean this. The land interpretation. But anyway, that, that guy with his, you know, two axes and them training together and, like, cheap shot and him worrying about his 
Aes Sedai when they're talking, um, and then the scene where he's with Nynaeve and all the warders are hanging out, and they sort of, they give her a different perspective mm -hmm. on what the Aes Sedai and warder bond is, and I felt like that worked. I mean, you don't need philosophy time. Like, you want to you bring in some philosophies? But again, I think the show's doing a job with these moments of tying it to character, because mm -hmm. Nynaeve has a very set way that she views this group, mm -hmm. um, and so to get somebody else like she could never hear this from moraine but to hear it from like another i said i warder that feels realistic or a couple of orders right mm -hmm. so that scene around the fire with them oh yes all day like i could just watch warders hanging out and talking all day long because again this is the same sort of idea like that happens in the world not not with my knee but this is where it starts this is where i begin to war with myself mm -hmm. it's like if you're showing me something i really want to see if you're changing the book to do it, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> like, and I feel like I'm betraying everything to say that, but this, this kind of gets back to what I was saying before, that, you know, if you're going to replace something and it's it's better, cool, and obviously, you know, better is subjective, and for me, it's like getting to see moments with characters I love, like Levain, like Warders, stuff like that. So, this to me was just an awesome scene, um, and I straight up teared up again. I don't even know why, but, um, why, why was this specific thing, but... Zoe Robbins, uh, who plays Nynaeve, really got me in the scene with her and Lan. Mm. Um, I think because, I mean, I already said that I, I had liked what they had been doing with Nynaeve and Lan earlier um, in episode two, I want to say. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in the previous episodes. Um, and I really did enjoy that, but I felt that, like, they gave her, like, time and moments. Like, that, that scene with her and Moraine with the cleaning rocks, it just put me off in so many different ways. I feel like I wasn't getting to quite see her as an actress, but I was really impressed with uh, some of the close-up shots about, you know, you're not what I expected. And then even uh, the moment, this is where I teared up, when she gave this little, like, this little speech that her parents had said to her when they, like, left her. Mm. Um, just getting to hear her talk old tongue, like, I was like, talk to me old tongue. Mm -hmm. I did like, this was, it was just amazing. And then for Lan to be like, would you like to know what that means? Mm -hmm. Like, that to me is, again, the spirit of small town people leave and then they get to learn more about the larger word i talked about this mm. with minethra and how they knew this song and then moraine could tell them more about it so that to me all worked um and i, I, I love that idea and say, um Do also it. it's it. giving me the mm -hmm. the thing mm -hmm. i complained about in the book it's giving me the moments mm -hmm. with them so i buy i don't know if they're gonna go even right. the love story in this but it's giving me those mm -hmm. moments where i will now buy that when it happens right. later on, which I never had in the I, book. So like, I feel, they're, I feel they're very much hinting at that. So I don't, yeah, mm -hmm. that that's, I think seems they're giving them to those moments together. So even though like the actor who's playing Lan, I mean, even the writing for Lan is very different. Like the hot tub scene, I've seen a lot of people complain about like, because Lan wouldn't complain. But with this take on Lan, I feel like the there is chemistry between uh, these two characters, these two actors I like. Now, I didn't like that it ended up being the exact same thing that, like, all Malkiri said to their kids as they were leaving them. Because it's like, wait, are you sending out Nynaeve to be Malkiri then, somehow? Mm -hmm. And that felt like, which is um, Lan's old, like, group mm -hmm. when he was talking about the Seven Towers. So that, to me, felt a little, like, you're making this, like, too close. It felt a little too overlapping for it to be the exact same phrase. But everything up until that moment, I really like this idea of him asking, you know, would you like to know what it means? Um, so that was cool. That, that again, it it continued to build their relationship, which I like. Um, stuff that felt shaky to me. So to me, the biggest problem with this episode was that the camp doesn't go anywhere. That they, they've got, they're supposed to be taking Loghain to the White Tower, but they just seem perfectly content to, to stay there for no apparent reason. Mm. So that, to me, really sort of undercut a lot of what was happening uh, in the episode and the tenseness and, like, because they've got this whole thing where Leander is like, we should gentle him now, and the other one's like, no, we need to do it here. And they finally do address it when she's like, could we keep this up, traveling miles? It's like, well, shouldn't you be traveling? What like, was why, why are you frame? staying in this one spot? What was the time frame? Here? Know, it, it felt like it was a couple days because we do see them at night, 
um, with the Nynaeve and them hanging out and talking, right? Um, but that's when she's hanging out with the warders. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, because, and then there's a great line about Lan where he's like, you always get emotional when I'm drinking. Like, I enjoyed that kind of, again, continuing to show mm -hmm. the, the bond between Aes Sedai and Warder. But then it is the next day when the army invades. So it's like, why aren't they getting ready to leave? Like, why, why are they just holed up in this spot? So that just seems so it's very one day. strange to me. It's one night. I think it's I think it's two days. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I don't like no know what time they attack exactly in the day. I don't know. I'm I mean, not feeling like... it. This feels like nitpicky Jeff to me, where like they were they were holed up I mean, here. The, the sun, we wander up on the camp. Totally the, we have one night. They're camping yeah. for the night. We get that one night, and then the next day I mean, they, they get, get attacked. During the day. Yeah, the next day, during the middle of the day, they're getting attacked. It's not like it's sunrise or something. Um, I don't know I mean, what time it is. Just, I'm How saying, do you know what time it, it is? In a book, because you can see the lighting. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, it is a book. the position like, of the sun in the sky. I don't know where that is. I didn't get that. So, with the amount of light that is there, it has the to be the day. But the point, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they didn't, yeah, it's that, they it's didn't do surprise. it right it's in not, the morning. It's true. They didn't leave first They're not attacking thing. a dog. They didn't leave first Which would be a tactic. Which would be a tactic to attack a dog. I'm just saying, it's it's just Everybody very odd that they're having comments. this argument about... Uh, is this nitpicky, Jeff? Or am I crazy? Or this is this is, nitpicky, this Jeff? In a whole book that's about people waking up early and getting a move on, and not waking up early and getting a move on, this is a journey that's book without book any journey about. happening right now. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's what most Major of the theme is, of, of Robert Jordan is... is, is staying at in, staying early. at Halos, Early bird gets the waking worm. Up, waking Whoa, up, Robert and then Jordan. moving on. Because they, they're being chased. <laughs> They're being chased, bro. They don't have time. So yeah, that that to me was a uh, kind of a well, especially because they're using it as a point of conflict. Like if you're if you're gonna have something be a point of conflict, but then they're not like the other one's not like, well, we should hurry up and move on. Like it's just it's odd, especially because they they point to it. So that to me was uh, was a weakness there. Um, in terms of the the ex power explosion at the end, yeah, it was foreshadowed too much. Me, I mean, I I, I like the line where Moraine says, you know, I think the Dark One is as confused as we are about who it is, and Lan's like, I don't know if that's comforting or not. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that That to me, like, I felt like they were selling me a little bit on, is it Loghain, baby, now, <laughs> right? Um, you know, who knows? Um, but with that, for her to then seem like she wants to talk to him, right? And then she seems very unsure. Like, Moraine seems very unsure of, like, maybe he is. But then when she talks to him, she's basically just like, you're not yeah, you're not it. It should be this huge glowing ball of light, mm -hmm. um, right? And I'm like, what happened? Again, it, it's my same problem that happened in the first episode where the dragon gets captured and she's just like, it's not him. Like, they're just not doing... We just feel like they're not doing anything from Rain's character to show, like, how she's deciding if somebody is maybe the dragon reborn or not, um, and then having her make these pronouncements. Um, so it was just a really weird thing, like, her speech to Loghain, and then for I think it was something after. about what he said, is what you're supposed to interpret, that he didn't answer that question in but a way that, that she thinks... Yeah, that she thought he would, mm -hmm. and that she's kind of correcting if he was the dragon, you would have said whatever the the ball of or the light or the whatever yeah. it was. I, whether that's I, convincing I, or I, not, I, I don't know, but I, I did get I the sense that, that she's... Spoilers. Huh? Oh. Yeah, I'm like, how do I do this? With oh. Uh, yeah, it just. So good, good. Finish. Yeah. Uh, that, well, that he answered the question wrong. Yeah, that he answered the question got. wrong was my interpretation. Yeah, I mean, so, so in some ways, a lot of people have talked about how much you know they they love Rosamund Pike, and don't get me wrong, like Rosamund Pike has the the weight for the character in terms of like you know what she says seems you know like it's very important. Um, and she gives some great speeches. Um, but I don't know, that that's a moment that, because I, I didn't get that at all. I mean, and people could argue that, you know, well, I said I don't give much away or something like that. But if, if that is the tech you're going for, like, I just, I mean, she says that he's wrong, but I, I don't get that that's the reason. It felt to me very much like she came in to, I don't know, like, it seemed like, yeah, to ask him a question, well, you're saying makes sense. Mm -hmm. I came in to ask you a question. Right. If you get it right, I'm going to escape with you. If not, I'm going to help them hold you. That that sounds cool to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that the surroundings support your theory, um, but I just didn't get that 
from the actress. Like I didn't, I didn't get the like, you just failed that answer. And now let me tell you why I'm wrong. And probably part of that is what she is saying doesn't actually. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't say anything about it. So just as, as a book, okay, as we'll, we'll circle read, there's back. A, Let's there's note an, it. There's an extra reason okay, okay. why to me her reaction seems very strange. Mm. Um, and then especially too, um, for the other one to be like, oh, I think so I know powerful. what you're referring to actually now because of the end of book one thing she says at the end of book one is what you're referring to. Sure. Right. Yeah. I think I know. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, but, so it doesn't, again, it doesn't sort of work with the, like the history of the world. I mean, th this, this, this arc is the most problematic with the histories of everything. Um, because they also talk about female false dragons, which we'll get into momentarily. Um, but yeah, so th this was just a scene that, that then felt again, it was like the ax, but then more where she's like, your power is nothing compared to the, you know, the, what the dragon will be. And then right after, like moments after that, we get the explosion of power right. from Nynaeve. Right. And then Loghain being like, oh. Right. Um, so I get why they're doing that because something, again, how do you do this? I suppose something quasi-similar does happen in the book. Okay. So again, part of me was like, I get the spirit of what they're going for with a couple of these statements right. um, about power levels, because power levels are absolutely talked about mm. uh, in the book. And I, I think in a fun way, uh, and they're doing some of that here. It was just, it felt a little too much kind of back to back, like too, I, I don't know. The, the writing just didn't feel as clean to me in that part. Okay. What, what was your reaction yeah. to her being like, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what the dragon should look like. And now you see it 10 seconds later, like, um, which, again, in some ways works for his character of him seeing like, oh, wait, I'm not, because you've seen all this great buildup of him really believing in himself um, and, you know, how he gets the king on his side. So I'll say that worked. Like, I, I really like the actor who's playing Loghain. Different than I expected, but I'm, I'm liking it. Um, and I feel like he did a really good job of seeing somebody else with that sort of light and power. Um it was just, again, like, I, I would say I'm being nitpicky in this moment. We can see, did, did this moment work for other people? Did it feel too soon? I just wanted them to say, like, the Dragon Reborn, like, she could have said the Dragon Reborn will be so much more powerful than you. Even, again, I just, I wish we could have had a moment where we got a sense that she felt that, because here's my problem with it. Again, this is me being nitpicky, but I'm going to be finishing moments. Early on, we see that it is, they talk a lot about Loghain's strength, the other green that's asking her about her dog, like, talks about how strong he is. She's the one that says the comment, which I'm fine with her saying, because I believe she would know. She's off, like, you know, doing wars, helping the Reds in this particular place. Not that greens really do much with... Well, anyway, point is, they talk a lot of how powerful Loghain is. And it seems like Moraine agrees with him, because she talks about, you, we see that it's hard for... And I can't imagine they would ever give it to someone who was just wounded. But whatever. So we see Moraine, like... You know, that it's hard for her to keep his shield mm -hmm. on. We see Moraine talk about how it's weird to not see the men's weaves, that type of thing, which I'm glad that was nice for him to talk about. Um, so the directions point in that she does think he's powerful and that she does think he could be the mm -hmm. dragon. So then if and then if his, the way he answers the question is wrong is that he hears the ancestors and that he's not supposed to. And then her reason is you are not strong enough. Mm -hmm. That just wasn't set up from the narrative. So that just doesn't make sense to me that that's what she says. And then she goes on to say, what you'll be is this ball of light. And then there's the big ball of light. Mm. He's like, ball of light. So that, that to me, it's just, it's just not as skillful to me. It, it's just not as nuanced. Uh, it's just too in your face obvious compared to some other writing in the episode that I thought was excellent. Yeah. So, well, um, that's my soapbox for that okay. that arc, which is a shame because it's such a powerful moment uh, in a lot of other ways. Well, I I found it unconvincing, kind of because like because he's so talked up, and then like mm -hmm. I don't know, there's something about that. Uh, oh, I'm so emotional! I'll suddenly exhibit yeah. this crazy level of power that you know, you should not have, you know, at this point, or that you've never exhibited before, 
feels yeah. like cheesy to me so that like felt very cheesy and then when i was watching it though i was like okay yeah. this is cheesy but the one thing it does do is reinforce mm. this goddamn mystery um about who really is the one because if yeah. she did something like by yeah. boosting her so much now you make her a legitimate candidate for this and yes. you reinforce this mystery which again you know me doesn't make me any happier because now we're doing something with, with that i find really cheesy and kind of unconvincing just to prop up yeah. a stupid mystery that i don't I, care about <laughs> I, I agree well and, and this this is what i mean about well done or not because we had talked about this before i know we said like this episode will be quick not at all no. um but so uh I, I would agree, and this is what I mean about if something's going to be replaced or if you're going to prop up a mystery, it needs to be done well. I think the way they did it with Matt works well. Mm -hmm. With him, the way he's acting, them looking like, you know, maybe he's crazy, and then Tom talking about it, and that worked to me. Um, this, yeah, it, it felt like they, they want to have everyone get hurt, so then you're worried about everybody. When Moraine got, like, the spirit of sound, I'm like, man, Moraine just she's really gets beat up, up in this show. <laughs> like, she just get, gets... <laughs> Dang, girl. <laughs> taking all the injuries. Um, so then, yeah, it put him in this... Im the problem was it put him in this, like, impossible situation, almost, mm. which, even if you're not a book reader, I think... I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'd be interested to hear people, what, what they say. Did you think... Lynn was about to die. Did you think Moran was about to die? Did that did that work? Did that hit work as much as did you think Matt killed the family? Right? Like which which of those actually works? Right? Um, and so yeah, I would agree. This to me felt very much like we want to push this narrative of a potential for uh, Nynaeve, and so we want to show her be super powerful, which she is. Mm -hmm. So that that part does work. But then it's again this like. Oh, I'm gonna do a magic heal all like that. That is a trope, by the way. Like I just watched an anime like six months ago, where it's that's like the magic, like I magically just heal all. Um, but like, and the in thing the books, is, it, there's a difference be between training. somebody being proclaimed to you right. know be able to match the Emerlin seed or whatever she says in the book yeah. versus literally like first time at bat you hit the grand slam right like that's and, and, different and, and she's doing it right yeah it's different to be powerful in the one power like you can access a lot of the one power versus being able to actually use it mm -hmm. um and so like there's and again, i get the like, idea that that's trauma sure. that's allowing her to do that it's not just right. like something that you just did easy peasy it's because of this intense trauma right. but like but that alone is cliche at this point yeah and that's the problem so this is another thing people have also talked a lot about so i don't i don't think this is ah man it's hard to do without spoilers but um so there's Nynaeve using the power is not easy for her mm. as i think was captured here mm. um, but i am wondering how they're going to continue mm. that narrative to do how they've shown it happen here Interesting. so yeah that, that's more just i think we'll talk more about that in the future but yeah, I, I am very curious, like, how did this moment play out for people? I think if you're not looking, if we're not nitpicking, right? Like, I mean, big stuff happens that, you know, you text me after, you're like, stuff happens. And I watched it, I was like, stuff did happen. So, like, you know, from, from the standpoint of, of watching a show where stuff's happening, like, cool, right? Um, but in terms of, you know, at least for our perspectives, obviously, uh, there, were, there were some bumps in that road. And, and I think the reason we talk about these things is because it, it affects payoffs. And, like, I want to have the payoffs that everybody's happening, right? Like, I want to I wanna enjoy it. I want to be like, ah, right? <laughs> freak out. Um, but, but some of these just didn't feel quite as earned as others. But I will say, overall, the fact the show got me to cry, like, twice, like... Hey. Damn. All right. It wasn't like that. Good signs. Yeah. Good signs. Real quick, You're updating that one-star review on Amazon as we speak, aren't you? Those were all me, Steve. <laughs> yep, all those, all that 25, 26 years old, it was just me on different accounts. Uh, me and my wife. My wife wouldn't even watch the show. I started oh, the show, there. she's like, what are you doing? Yeah, and I was just like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm watching the next episode. She's like, you're doing that alone. I'm sorry for you that you have to do that. Oof, <laughs> that you like harsh, that. harsh. <laughs> so, but anyway, but it was, it was, my point is like, all the one-star reviews are just us. Mm -hmm. But no, um, I'll be updating that to two stars for the single, the two tiers that I have. Uh, no, uh, I, I never put on a rating for this show. My my doing of that is these videos. Um, but 
what I was going to say was just real quick, they did actually address something that many people, many like, you know, I think many book readers mm -hmm. had been wondering, which was false dragons. Um, and so uh, they did legit say yeah. that there have been female false dragons. Oh, right, right, um, right. Which is interesting because then they still go with the like red are okay with women. Um, you know how, because yeah. they say to Nynaeve, you're, you're welcome to our tents yeah. anytime, all women are, it's right? So it's like, it, it's a little tricky. Like, that to me made a bit more sense when, oh, man, how am I going to do with that? <laughs> uh, anyway, the point, man, it's tough because they made these, like, big changes. Right. So anyway, point is that it, I don't think it's super muddy yet. But it's also not super clear right. what it means to the ramifications of the politics of the world yeah. if if it goes either if, if the dragon reborn can be anybody yeah, i'll yeah, just yeah. say um, so it, we saw a moment of that here and i'm wondering are they gonna try to like follow that path yeah. and do more, right. or is it just going to kind of be this weird thing so yeah i mean that's just like as we said from the very beginning if you make these sweeping changes it should affect other parts of the world, well, I so think, we'll see. I think the interesting thing now is what mm -hmm. what is the motivation behind that change? And I know a lot of mm -hmm. people in comments are quick to jump on inclusion mm -hmm. or diversity or what have you. Right. I think it's for the mystery, man. I think that's why they're doing they're it, both. because they really, really want that yeah. mystery. I, I, well, yeah, I mean, I you could also say as as a bonus too, we get yeah. to come off as more right. inclusive. Yeah. But like, I, I don't know, that doesn't super hold water to me mm -hmm. because it is kind of I think a more interesting uh, dynamic and, and commentary politically mm -hmm. if that's your only goal to have. I like what the Redesha said in that in that first mm -hmm. episode in that opening, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of like playing mm -hmm. if you're just yeah. if you're just interested in in talking about those politics actually having this separation i think does that in a more interesting way you know um so mm. I, or at the very uh, least uh, i think hopefully we're getting the white tower soon right Sorry, it, it's, and it seems like there was tons of it in the previews so it seems like we probably are um and there's an episode yeah. titled i said i bill i believe um so we should be there in that episode probably but like i i feel it's more that this misguided they really wanted this mystery that my wife and yeah. our one commenter's wife called out instantaneously mm -hmm. and i think that's a mistake and like if if it does muck up yeah. some other things just for that mystery was it worth it that's what i'll be keeping my eye on i, I would like to know was that worth it i'm definitely curious because i think as we pointed out, it's very obvious that they're making choices to push that mystery, mm -hmm. some that go off the rails a little bit. Um, and we'll see. I'm, I'm fascinated to see when it is revealed, how people feel, if they're happy with it, if it felt earned or not, um, or if it just kind of brushed aside and wasn't even needed. That's you know? my prediction. Um, but I, I, right? I am also very curious to see how I said I will, will be handled um, and how they do these politics. Mm. Um, but I will also say, like, it's funny because the, <laughs> when we talk about the different arcs and arcs people may or may not like, you know, the stuff that's basically the books, but maybe just with parts emphasized, I'm in love with, like, the Tinker scene, I'm like, yeah. The, like, m most of what they did with the Matt Parent thing, like I said, the family, whatever, they just wanted that moment. But, like, overall, I like what they're going for, the group traveling, what that's like, Matt sort of degrading, Yeah. But it's this other arc that that is what contains all the changes mm -hmm. about, you know, like the nature of the world and everything. And they're continuing to juggle all that stuff. And some of it's done okay and some of it, you know, isn't. But I want to get into two last quick things. Well, actually, one of them we already covered about the female false dragons. That's a big thing. But the last thing to me is the action scenes. Um, I feel like that to me is the show's personal weakness. Um, a lot of people have commented, I, I have seen so many polarized comments about the show, it is fascinating to me. Some people being like, these are the greatest actors ever, others people being like, these actors are terrible, it's just like a soap opera. Some people are being like, these are the greatest special effects ever, other people are like, I hate these special effects, they look corny and cheesy, I can make these like on my computer. So it's like, it's, it's fascinating to me how divided people are, and as we talked about in our last video, how much of that is real, or is it 
you know, compounded by the emotional reaction to people hatred, hating what they're doing or reacting against the hatred or like, no, I really like it. I love just getting to see this on screen. So, you know, but for me, I, I really was watching it and being like, how do I feel about this? The magic feels, ah, it's okay to me. So, you know, scenes like with the Aes Sedai redirecting the arrows, I thought that was kind of cool. It's just tricky because I know the other type of stuff they can do with the one power. So it feels like, why aren't you just doing this? Mm. Or why aren't you just doing that? Um, but I realize that they're constrained by budget and doing these like ground explosions and stuff like mm. that. And don't get me wrong, like I said, I can use Earth to, mm. to do things. Yeah. But it just, it feels, I, I don't know, as someone that in book one, there's not very much magic. So how was the action to you? Was was Were those parts compelling? Did they feel well shot, well choreographed? I'm just curious, because there's a, a decent amount of it in this episode. Now, I remember while well, watching that battle part going, um, mm -hmm. the only good magic in a fantasy movie I've ever seen is Infinity War. And then after that, I think you should just stop making fantasy movies. In fact, I think Infinity War is the best fantasy movie that was ever made and uh it's um, it's got my vote but I, but the magic in there with, with matt with magic showing the yeah, magic the in show there magic. like the battle was different things are happening creative things are happening visually interesting things are happening and you yeah. know the complaint always about the harry potter movies where they're just yeah. sending bolts of blobby bolts of plasma at each other always and that's kind of all they ever did battling with magic in the harry potter movies which i definitely agreed with i was like yeah this is lame you can do anything do some more creative things um with your magic and yeah there's nothing remotely creative or interesting happening yeah. with the magic here but i felt that about most magic at least when it's used in a That's battle true. way in movies so yeah. it didn't like super mm. bug me but mm -hmm. i did have that thought was like infinity war had the only magic battle that i've ever i've ever liked on film yeah i mean I, we were talking with um well i think dr strange does a good job of it too and they're they're using some of that same stuff in infinity war um because i was talking with someone in the comments about how the they had wished they made the magic in the in this show wheel of time look like they did more so in Doctor Strange, um, which I can agree do, does look visually really cool with like the rotating and like the the you know that um what is it? It's like when you're working with metal sparks when it's like sparks are like flying mm -hmm. off of it. Um, it does have that really cool look, and they did a lot of uh, stuff. Uh, what's that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio where they go inside people's minds and the world like tilts and everything? They do a lot of... Yeah, Inception. Inception, yeah. yeah. So they did, like, inception -esque stuff. And, and, but anyway, my point just is, like, that is where they were getting creative and it looked cool. And then, yeah, Infinity War. Oh, my goodness, the sequence. Oh, the magic was amazing. But anyway, um, I just don't think they got the money for this year. Right. So I, I do wish that they had found something else to do with it. Like, to me, the scene with Loghain, like, stopping the dagger and then, like, again, wrapping the dude up, but then as the wrapping's leaving, healing mm. him... That to me looked cool, or like the two voices sort of beside him. Mm -hmm. That looked neat, but and, and even the explosion where blades and stuff go over that looked kind of okay. But like just the the woods battle, to me at least, the action continues to be sort of there, but not really adding or subtracting mm -hmm. a lot to it. I felt sort of a similar way about the fade um, fight with Tom. Like it was cool in a small stage, him throwing daggers, catches a dagger. I mean, we've seen a fair amount of caught caught daggers and arrows in this day and age, you know. Um, I, I would have liked it if he, if the Fade could have done something more with, like, their nature, natural magic or the way they move um, would have been cool because uh, they're supposed to be, like, really sinuous and, you know, their cloaks, like, never move. I know, again, they're limited on budget, but, yeah, there's just... There, there wasn't much for me to geek out about in terms of, like, the... the most of the fighting that happens in this. To me, the best was... I rewatched episode one, and some of the Trollocs just where they're there and like yelling. I was like, "Man, that looks mm. awesome!" So it just it continues to feel like they blew their whole budget on the Trollocs, and they didn't have it. <laughs> they didn't have it for for this part. But I would continue to be interested about how people are feeling um, regarding the magic, the way the magic is used. I thought catching the arrows and then dropping it on people wasn't that, that to me was clever, like a mm. clever use of it. Yeah. I thought was kind of neat how it, they caught each arrow and then dropped it. It does sort of make me wonder again about their, they are allowed to defend themselves. That that felt, you know, pretty, but we're just 
killing people now, but you know. So, and the warders are supposed to be some of the greatest fighters ever. And, you know, while I love this scene with them all around the campfire, I don't know, I just feel like they don't have the, you know, the Jackie Chan, like, you know, or whatever, you know, fight choreographer uh, yeah. that they need for this. A lot of people have complimented episode one, the way Lan and Moraine work together, mm -hmm. how she's like casting spells and Lan's like sort of mm -hmm. circling around her. And I will say, looking back at that, I like what they were going for. Some of the cuts and stuff just, I don't know, I'm just such a big action guy that they were like, they're okay, I like the spirit of what they were going for. And I just wish there was more of that in this. Just a little more cleverness or showing how the bond works or the way they would fight that's different than a way we might have normally seen or just someone being amazing. Um, you know. So anyway, that, that was it. It was just sort of there, but it wasn't to me like the impactful part of the episode. All right, Jeff, any predictions? What, what What's coming next? Oh, um, that's hard for me to say, I mean, with their venture off. But since they have ventured off of the book so much, I, I could actually do a prediction without spoilers. Um, I, I feel like we're going to see, you know, Matt and Rand continuing on the road. Um, I think, you know, we might get to some ends and stuff. Oh, I don't no. know. I'll leave it there. Some Maybe. ends, finally. Some ends. I love my ends. Um, with Our the, end count the is very low right now. It's very low end counts I'm, compared to the book. I don't know what they're going to do with the Perrin, Egwene stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even want to say. I don't think um, there are going to be any crows. I, I don't think there's going to be. I, I, don't, I don't think so. I also I, don't I think, think they're running know, into the White Cloaks because we already got, like, White Cloak kind of scenes, I think, you know? No, I, I think, well, that would be, yeah, I, I think the White Cloaks are going to feature again. Oh, you I'll do? just say that. Okay. In, so, in some arc, in some arc, oh, I think the sure. White Cloaks are definitely yeah, coming back. But... Um, I, I think, I think, I think they're, pardon me, in this season, White Cloaks are definitely going to returning. I feel like the reason they put them early was to set them up early to then bring them okay. back. And I'm excited for what? that. Because I, 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 besides their costuming, uh, I loved uh, the, you know, actors they've got for that group, or the two mains, I should say. Um, but, um, so I think that will eventually happen somewhere. And then with the, I want to get back to what you said, which was sort of the disappointment about Loghain, that it was sort of one and done. Like we meet him, it's amazing, it's awesome, and then it's over basically at the end. So, I mean, I guess Moraine and crew are just going to go off to find uh, the rest of the group, or maybe they're going to go ahead and follow the group to Tarvalon. It does seem like they're hinting at that because um, Lan says to Nynaeve, you know, Tarvalon will have resources, and that's where they're going. So I think they'll just be on the road to Tarvalon. So maybe maybe soon we'll get Aes Sedai. And also, because there are no coins, yeah. there are no magical find-you coins, and she has that speech yeah. where she's like, I lost them, and Lan's yeah, like, I lost them. It does feel like they, like they gave up, like they're not going to launch a search uh, Which for those kids. Which is kind of crazy. It's weird, yeah. I mean... I, I like the scene where, you know, she's like, your losses are my losses. I, I, I would have liked it if it was more like our losses or like that kind of thing, because that's more what the warders were speaking of. But I also do like the eyes to die sort of, you know, being more on a pedestal mm -hmm. in their minds. But anyway, um, but it is weird that they're just like, too bad. I guess we'll go to Tarvalon. Um, it does seem it does seem like that's what the thought is. Like, we're just going to go to Tarvalon. So I could just see them like just smash cutting to Tarvalon. Like we just... We were on the road, and then we're just here, right? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they got so much fallout to deal with. Like, Nynaeve just channeled. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. What are the talks that they're going to have? What's going to happen with that? So I hope they don't escalate that too much. Um, I hope they do spend some time to talk about, like, their reactions. Like, we had some time with Moraine talking to Egwene about the power. I hope we get a little bit of that with Nynaeve or something. Um, we see the fallout of, you know, Nynaeve just saved Land's life. Are they going to talk about that? So... You know, I hope we get to see what happens with all that. Um, one last thing that I did, uh, well, no, I can't, I can't talk about that yet, but I will say I did have a moment. I'm not going to say where, I'm not going to say what until it happens later. I did have a moment where I was like, oh, wow, I'm really liking this character. Maybe the show will do it different. And it actually made me a little happy because mm -hmm. there's one character in the books that um, it doesn't, things, we get more with them, but we don't quite get as much as I would like. Mm. And so because of the emphasis the show is putting on this character, it does, I'm not saying it's crazy to emphasize, but I will say I did have a, another moment of betrayal where I was like, oh, they could do something different than the book. 
which which I'm okay with if it's like fun and something I want. So, All right. Anyway, that that's that's my completely ambiguous prediction that I'll bring up later. But I'm trying not a to little bit of mystery. Um, gotta have that a little bit of mystery. Robert about, Jordan fashion. About, gotta have a little bit of mystery. Right? What about your prediction, Steve? And then I do want to let people know where the. Uh, the animated shorts are because it took me some work oh, to find okay. them. Okay. Yeah. Where to, where to locate them? No, I think we're going. I think you're. We're going to Tarvalon with the uh, with the Aes Sedai Ooh. crew. I, yeah, I don't yeah. know what Matt and and Rand and Perrin and Egg are going to do now. I guess maybe I would say Perrin and Egg are going to run into White Cloaks. So I guess that would make sense. Um, but then, yeah, how are we getting this whole crew? back together i don't know i hope they continue going far afield I, as much as i kind of like was had some iffiness about the end of right. that i said i camp sequence i liked not knowing anything i liked kind of like getting to experience yeah. it uh for a first time you know i you know me yeah. i like changes give me give me some changes you do so i you i hope changes. we continue in that vein of, of seeing more mm -hmm. and bringing more characters into this than just our core group yeah i know i'll be it is a kind of an odd moment for me to be like i don't know <laughs> like you know i've got a general idea but as we said considering how quickly they're progressing through stuff it does seem like what if the next episode finishes book one Right? Like, what, what, if, what if that happens somehow? Like, that'd be crazy, and then we're suddenly in a book two. So, it's it does feel like a bit of a wild ride. I will say I am, because of the emotional attachments I had to some of the scenes that happened, I am very curious to see where it goes next. Um, so, yeah. In terms of animated shorts, everybody, um, I especially like the ones that are from Aes Sedai Bill. It's like they're training a new class. Um, it I, we had heard about them. We had talked about them before release. I could not find them. Finally did, thanks to another um, YouTube video I watched about where to locate them. But basically, when you're watching an episode, Amazon has these, like, little drop-downs that'll tell you details about the shows. Oh, Those annoy me. Uh, I don't yeah, remember they're actually. Awful. But if you... Oh, they're terrible. But if you click the one that says bonus... That will then take you to the episodes. Uh, um, if you want to find them, everybody, just do it for episode four. Because if you do it for episode one, it'll only show you the animated short for episode one. Because they're doing one animated short uh, okay. per episode, it seems. But if you just click it for episode four. So start watching episode four. Click bonus content. It'll list all four of them. Interesting and there's some strategy stuff there about... to try and get us to look at those things, which oh, I... <laughs> weirdly hate it. Well, it's completely bizarre to me because obviously production value was put in them, the art, the voice acting, everything. There is so much other stuff you can find so easily. Like you can see costume mm. stuff. You can see breakdowns about each character. I do not know why the videos aren't just another tab. Mm. So what I'm talking about is when you're on the main page, like for an episode, if you scroll down, there's all these tabs you can pick for who are the characters? What are the different parts of the world? It's like, let me show you the rings that they use, like stuff like that. And the videos aren't part of that. That's where I expected them to be, but they're not. You have to instead click this special bonus on the actual video itself. So they're like hiding something that they put a lot of work into. It's really weird to me. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, I do recommend watching them. There's some cool stuff there. Um, I like the format of it. I, I wish they were sort of just all out, but I guess they're doing one at a time. And that, that is the episode that says Sidir, Sidine, and Stone. So they're still not doing it in the actual show, but they've got it in the end. Oh. That, that was one of my concerns, that they wouldn't talk about the nuance in the show. Okay. But they are talking about it in the animated short. So. All right, everybody. Check go. those out, and we will be back next yep. week with our yep. another super duper long thoughts and feelings know, can... about, the, uh, yeah, about the next episode. But we'll see you all then, everybody. See you then. Okay, I'm still rolling because I want to um, I want to find a halfway point and say, see if I can cut in something to go like, okay, next episode we'll mm. talk about uh, the rest. I I don't know where is there a, something generic oh. we can say that I can kind of end one half of this vi hour and a half long video sure. and then go into the next one, or is that oh, going to be too hard? Uh... No, I mean, if you want to, I, I get the reason why. I mean, we are talking about it in arcs. Yeah. So I would say cutting it off after either the uh, two off one arc, or probably after the mat. I would say yeah. cut it off after the mat. Yeah, yeah, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so why don't we just say, okay, everybody, well, we uh, are going to take a little, no, what should I say? Um, 
Okay, everyone, we're going to end it right here for now, but we will come back in the next video, talk about Jeff, a lot of stuff yeah. in Aes Sedai camp, which I'm sure right. you are, uh, you have thoughts. I'm guessing that you have thoughts. Okay. Yeah, no, that sounds great. That sounds good. <laughs> so that, that was actually it. I was trying to do the take, but, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to say something like that and you say, oh, I got thoughts or something like that. And then we'll end. Okay. Oh, well, I mean, oh, I thought that sounds good work. Okay. Yeah, okay sure. Good no, work. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Uh, all right, everybody. We will see you then.